Hey guys, my name is Rich Legrand. I'm doing a lot of work with Pixie, and we have a new release of firmware in Pixiemon, and it does a lot of things a lot better than before. We're really excited about it, and I wanted to show you guys a video of me kind of stumbling through some demos, and I hope you guys enjoy it. So here's Pixie. So you'll plug it in, and then bring up Pixiemon. And uh, Pixiemon will notice right away that you have a uh, incompatible version of firmware. It'll say, would you like to upload the firmware in your Pixie? Click yes. And then it'll give you some instructions. And it looks kind of complicated, but it's actually really simple. You just, uh, just go ahead and you hold, unplug it, hold down the button, plug it in, and then release the button. And then you'll see um, it just kind of proceeds, finds the firmware, uploads it, and then Pixie reboots. And after a couple seconds, we'll see some video. And there we are. Okay. So now Pixie is running the latest and greatest firmware. So one thing I want to show you real quick is I'm going to bring up the configure dialog. And... Um, so uh, in the Pixiemon parameters screen, there's this thing called highlight overexposure. And um, it's really useful. Um, it's turned off by default, but um, if we enable it, um, it uh, allows us to tell if things are being overexposed. So this is on several consumer cameras um, where if, you know, certain parts of the image are overexposed, it'll, it'll highlight it as red. In this case, we're highlighting it as black. So um, this will help make sure that, uh, you know, the objects that you're teaching it look, you know, like they're not overexposed. So let's go ahead and uh, do a uh, uh, teach Pixie an object. So I have an object here, and... Um, so I'm going to use the button teach method to teach Pixie an object. And um, you don't have to have Pixiemon up and running, but it's nice to have the feedback. So the way we do the button teach mode is we hold down the button and then wait for it to go red, and then we release, and then it's in what's called light piping mode. And um, you can see it's giving us good feedback on the LED, um, whether we have good lock on our object. And we can also see Pixiemon's giving us some feedback, too, about, um, uh, yeah, whether it's got uh, a, a good region that it's, that it's uh, identified. So, but looking at just the LED, I can tell that it's got a good lock, and I'll just click it, and um, you can see it's got, uh, it's got a good lock on the object. And uh, I can do that with another object, in this case, a green ball. So in this case, I'll uh, hold down the button and then wait for it to turn orange, which is the second signature. So right now, we're, we're again, we're in teach mode, in light pipe mode. I look at the LED, I've got a good lock, I click, and now we've learned another object. And uh, we can keep on doing that. Let's do one more. Here's the uh, purple dinosaur. Hold on the button, wait for it to turn yellow this time for the third signature. And I'm going to bring this guy in real close. Click. And so here's, here's something that's interesting. Um, we don't have as good of a lock, but what we can do is we can actually um, turn it down a little bit using these sliders. And uh, you can see now we've got a, we've got a good lock. Whereas before, you know, it was it was actually getting more than just the object. With uh, with these new sliders, um, you can just kind of tune it in, kind of like, you know, it's a graphic equalizer. There's none of this minimum saturation or or minimum hue kind of or hue range kind of stuff. There's just one slider per signature, and all it all it does is it adjusts how inclusive you are or how uninclusive you are. So in this case, you dial it into a nice medium, and there you go. Um, so these are our objects. And um, it actually looks like we need to dial this one down a little bit. 
And um, these are our three objects. And um, one thing that's interesting I want to show you real quick also is that um, Pixie is pretty robust in, in uh, lighting. So I can, here I'm just grabbing the uh, camera brightness. And uh, as I turn it down, you can see that it's still, I'm going to turn this down a little bit, the minimum brightness. Even though it's really um, dark in the image, it's still got a good, good lock on the, on the object. And um, this is nice because as the lighting changes, um, it uh, doesn't lose, you know, the tracking of the object. And, of course, you know, if it gets too dark, it's going to lose it. But I got a nice happy medium, you know. This is pretty underexposed, but, um, and the, you know, the lighting is not very good, but uh, Pixie has a good, uh, uh, it's tracking it fairly reliably. Um, let's see, what else should I show? Um, let's, let's demonstrate the color codes. So this is the, uh, the box that Pixie comes in, and it has these two little color swatches in to make a, uh, a color code. And that's all a color code really is, is a uh, just couple pieces of color, you know, bumped up against each other. And uh, Pixie will actually uh, identify them as, you know, one object. And you can mix them and create different objects. So let's go ahead and get a good amount of lighting and then I'm going to clear all the signatures, so we'll start over. And um, again, you can see, try to find a good lighting, and then and reach in and uh, go into the Action menu and select Set CC Signature 1, and select the green swatch. And then do it again for the second signature, Set CC Signature 2. And you notice that um, I'm not... Um, I'm not using the uh, teach the button teach mode. I'm using uh, th through the Pixiemon GUI. Um, teaching color codes is probably easier that way. Um, so um, that's the way we do it. Um, instead of using like a fancy button press scheme, uh, we just do it through the GUI. Um, so as you can see, it's it's found the color code and it's uh, tracking it. One cool thing about color codes is that um, you get the angle, so you can see this little uh, this little theta here, um, or maybe it's phi. I forget which uh, Greek letter that is. It's uh, equal to the angle, and as I rotate this, um, it tells us what the angle is. And so it's kind of a neat freebie. Um, and that's pretty much that. Um, another cool thing uh, you can do with color codes is let's say you had like some Legos, um, these, these work pretty well as color codes. Um, so again, let's just do this real quick. Um, we'll uh, select signature one, two, and three. And you can see we've created a color code with uh, three different colors. And um, let's go ahead and adjust some of these because um, it seems like we're getting some. Uh, so that's pretty good. OK. So the cool thing is with Legos. So here we have uh, uh, a signature called 123. I could rearrange it. And um, it's uh, 213 now, or just 13, or 12, and then I can add to it. Here's, a, here's 213, and then I can add another one, 1213, and then I could add another one. 
three one two one three, and we can keep on doing that up. And so this is a color code with five color codes, and um, you know, the cool thing about color codes is you know you can mix them up and create lots of different combinations, and uh, it tracks the color. And um, one interesting thing is that um, let's say let's say we have this one. Um, 213, um, is that different than 312? I mean, the, do we, when we flip it over, does it change? It doesn't, doesn't change. It's, it's actually, there's an ambiguity there, um, and it's picking the color code that is the smallest in number. So it could be 312 or 213. So it actually picks 213 so that when we flip it over, the color code number doesn't change, but the angle does. So that's pretty cool. I mean, it, so color code is working pretty well in uh, this new release. Um, I'm really interested in, you know, we're all interested to see what uh, you guys do with it. Let's go into the, to the uh, pan tilt demo. So um, for those of the, you who bought the pan tilt, um, this, this guy's mounted on a pan tilt unit and uh, this is kind of what it looks like when it's uh, assembled. And uh, to get it working, you just, uh, let's go ahead and clear all these signatures and start over. Well, first we teach it something. I'm going to teach it this green ball again. So now it's got a good lock on the green ball. And then I go in the action menu, and uh, there's something called run pan tilt demo. And uh, so there it is tracking it. And it does a pretty good job. Um, so uh, a lot of times it's easy to get the uh, connectors swapped, like pan goes into the tilt connector and vice versa. Um, if, you're, if it's not being tracked very well, that might be what's going on. Sometimes the connectors are upside down and nothing happens, right? The servos aren't moving at all. Um, but yeah, pan tilt demo is an easy way to just kind of test things out. Um, you can also hook it up to an Arduino and have the Arduino actually control the pan and tilt um, servos itself. Um, you can do that with a Raspberry Pi or a BeagleBone Black. And um, so then Pixie becomes like a, a camera slash pan tilt unit. So one thing I wanted to show is something that's called the, uh, the teach threshold. And um, so this is useful. This is kind of an advanced feature. So if you go into the, uh, into the expert menu, there's some random parameters to, to tweak. Um, there's something called signature teach threshold. So let's go ahead and get it in teach mode. And um, so sometimes when it's teaching, it uses a region growing algorithm. And uh, sometimes it might actually, if you, you notice, when I pull this thing out, it, uh, it actually uh, kind of loses the track of what it's teaching or what it's, uh, uh, the region growing uh, algorithm will kind of fail. Um, sometimes this, this needs a little tweaking and uh, sometimes it's a little on the low side, as we see here, it's having trouble growing the entire region, um, usually around, uh, uh, you know, 2,500 or 2,000 is usually about uh, what's needed, but sometimes it needs to be adjusted depending on the lighting and things like that. So one last thing I want to show you is uh, something that sometimes confuses some people. Um, it's cooked mode versus Cooked, uh, cooked mode versus default mode. And uh, what we're looking at right now is the cooked mode. And cooked mode is just raw video with uh, the detected objects overlaid on top of it. And um, so you can see it's, it's you know, tracking the object. Um, this is actually the, this is, uh, the processing is happening on the PC in cooked mode. In default mode, where you click on the little, uh, default program icon, which is a little home, is what uh, actually happens when, PC, when the uh, Pixie is uh, 
doing all the processing on board Pixie. And uh, this is the mode that you would normally use Pixie with. You know, you, you don't wanna you don't want to have a PC in the equation. You want Pixie to do everything by itself. When Pixie's doing this, it doesn't have enough memory to actually grab an entire frame and send it over USB. So in this case, we only get the detected objects and um, you know the size. And uh, as you can see uh, right here on on the Pixie itself, uh, the LED glows uh, when it detects an object. So and it glows the brightness of, uh, of, you know, the brightness corresponds to the size. So as we move it in, it glows brighter. And I think that's pretty much it.